In this video, I'm going to show you how to bleed Shimano brakes. I'll be using a gravel bike, but this will work on any bike that uses Shimano brakes, whether it's road, gravel, or mountain. I'll be doing this with the Park BKM1 bleed kit, but you could use any bleed kit that's made for Shimano brakes or brakes that use mineral oil. The kits are going to come with a syringe or two like this one and other accessories that you'll need to do this job. The four steps that we're going to use in this video are the syringe method, then the gravity method, bleeding the caliper, and then bleeding the lever. Now, if you were in a really big hurry, you could skip some of these steps. And as I go through the video, I'll talk through what steps you could skip. For example, if you just wanted to use the syringe method, you could do that and stop there and go on with your life and probably be okay. If you wanted to use just the gravity method, you could do that. And again, you should be fine. You don't necessarily have to bleed the caliper or the lever, but they do ensure that you don't have any bubbles in the system. So I'm gonna go through all of the steps. And again, I'll talk through which steps you could skip if you were in a hurry. So let's get started. Other than a brake bleed kit that I showed, what you'll need to do this is most likely a seven millimeter wrench, either open or closed. I like the open ones, they're easier to work with. You'll need an Allen wrench set with various sizes. You'll need mineral oil. You'll also probably need either a flat blade screwdriver or an Allen wrench to get the brake pads out. You'll need a rubber band or a toe strap for the rear brake. I'll explain that coming up. You'll need some rubbing alcohol. If your brakes use the style of pen that's a cotter pen to hold the brake pads in, you'll need some needle nose pliers to get those out. You'll also want to wear some safety gloves and also wear safety glasses. It does help to have a work stand. It's not absolutely crucial, and although it would be a little bit difficult, you could get away without a work stand, especially if you were just going to use the syringe method. The first thing that you wanna do is remove the wheel. So in this case, of course, I'm doing the front brake. Next, we're gonna remove the brake pads. These brake pads have a little pin that I pull out before I use an Allen wrench. Some brake pads will have a little cotter pin, so you have to pinch them together and then pull it out. Not the best design, but again, some brakes are like that. I said Allen wrench, but this particular set of brakes uses a flat blade screwdriver. Usually mountain bike brakes will have an Allen wrench. So once you get this out, you can just pull out the brake pads. These have the cooling fins, so there is a left and a right, and it'll say an L or an R on both sides of the brake pads. The next thing that we're gonna do is take a tire lever and push the pistons inside the caliper just to reset them. Another way that you could do this is before you take the brake pads out, you can take a flat blade screwdriver, put them between the brake pads and just twist it. That's another way that you can reset the pistons. I'm just in the habit of doing this with a tire lever. Now we're gonna put a bleed block between the pistons. You might have bleed blocks that look like this. They perhaps came with your brakes. This kit comes with a bleed block and this bleed block has some holes in it so I can put the screw back through and just kind of hold it in place. Now we're gonna locate the bleed nipple on the caliper. This is the bleed nipple for this particular brake system. Sometimes it'll be on the top. Sometimes it'll have a separate bleed screw. And the way that you can identify that, this one allows you to put a seven millimeter wrench around here. So it's an integrated bleed nipple and bleed screw. If you cannot put a wrench around it, it may be recessed and you'll see usually a screw at the top that you can undo uh, on the process where I show to use this wrench. So again, depending on your brake system, the bleed nipple is going to be in various places. And on this Shimano mountain bike caliper, the bleed nipple is located in this position. This one uses a seven millimeter wrench to undo the bleed nipple. So now that I've located this one, I'm gonna remove this little rubber cover. Sometimes that cover will have a little uh, retention. I'm gonna take the whole thing off. Most bleed kits will come with a syringe holder like this one. So you wanna install that above the caliper, whether it's on the fork or on the seat stay if you're doing the rear brake. Time to start working with the oil. So we're gonna go ahead and put on some gloves. The nice thing about working with mineral oil is it's not toxic and corrosive like DOT fluid that is used in SRAM systems, but it is a good idea to go ahead and put on some gloves and safety glasses. We're gonna prep the syringe and you'll have a compression fitting that may or may not be on the tube. If it's not, go ahead and slide it on. Then we're gonna fill the syringe about two thirds with the mineral oil so you can just stick it in the container and draw up the plunger. So we now got the syringe full of the mineral oil. The next step is you wanna get all the bubbles out. So hold the syringe like this and then you'll probably see some bubbles in the tube. So you wanna take a rag, paper towel and just push up 
on the plunger. You can see some of those bubbles coming up. Just get all the bubbles out. Now we're going to attach the syringe. I'm going to go ahead and put the syringe in the syringe holder and then I'm going to put the tube onto the bleed nipple. Now if you wanted to use a close ended 7 millimeter wrench you would want to go ahead and put that on and then put the tube. I find it easier to use an open ended wrench and then it just makes it easier to put the tube on. Once the tube is on the bleed nipple you're going to want to push that compression fitting all the way up and that just kind of holds it onto the bleed nipple. Now again, if you wanted to only use the gravity method, you could bypass everything that I'm showing you with the syringe. You know, of course, putting oil in the syringe and then putting it onto the bike. And you can skip this step if you wanted to, and you'll probably be okay. But again, I'm gonna show you the full process. Now we're gonna locate the bleed port screw on the lever. So on road bikes, it's probably gonna be right here. Some of them have it in the back and some of them have it in the middle, but wherever it is, it's pretty obvious. It's a three millimeter Allen wrench and it's kind of a big screw, big flat screw that you pull out. And that is your bleed port screw where we're gonna put the funnel. On mountain bikes, the bleed port screw will be at the top. It's a three millimeter Allen wrench. If you're doing this on a road bike, you're gonna to need to undo the stem bolt so that you can rotate the bars. If you're doing it on a mountain bike, then all you need to do is undo the lever so you can tilt the funnel backwards and forwards. Uh, you want to have this so that they're loose enough to where you can move them by hand, but they still don't fall without, uh, you know, you pushing on your hand. So that should be good. On road bikes, it's a good idea to put a rag over this hood cover. You can just tie it on there. Because if you ever get mineral oil on the rubber part of the hood cover or on your handlebar tape, it can be really difficult to get off and it can make it slippery. So that's just kind of a precaution. Now we're going to take out the bleed port screw. Before we take out the bleed port screw, we want to rotate the handlebars or the lever if it's a mountain bike so that this is fairly level. And then this one actually uses a two millimeter Allen wrench. Mountain bikes usually use a three. When you take out the bleed port screw, make sure that the O-ring came with the screw. If it didn't, you need to take a little pick and just pick out the O-ring and put it back on the screw. Sometimes it'll it'll stay on top of that bleed port. So again, make sure the O-ring's on the screw. This particular one uses an adapter, the silver adapter. That's why it's nice to have a kit so that you can have the proper adapter that the funnel goes into. Next, we're gonna rotate the handlebars so that this is about 20 degrees from vertical. On road bikes, you're gonna see a little indicator here and that needs to be parallel to the ground. Again, that's gonna put the funnel about 20 degrees forward. If you have a mountain bike, just rotate the lever so that again, it's about 20 degrees forward. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the plunger. It helps to just kind of rotate that around. That makes it come out easier. Time to push fluid up through the system. So we're gonna take our wrench. Remember, you might have a separate bleed screw. So it could be up here, but if you could put a wrench, usually a seven millimeter around this integrated bleed screw and bleed nipple, then you know that they're together. So I'm gonna open that up half a turn. So just half a turn. Again, make sure the plunger is out of the funnel and we're just gonna push down on the syringe plunger. And you want to push it so that the plunger comes almost all the way down to the bottom, but not all the way. And as you do, you're gonna have fluid going up into your funnel. After the plunger goes almost all the way down, you're gonna tighten the bleed screw and you can remove the syringe. We're done with the syringe. I'll go ahead and take the syringe holder off as well. So if you only wanted to do the syringe method, you literally could stop there. Now you may want to skip the gravity method and go to where I bleed the caliper and bleed the lever, but you don't have to. Uh, sometimes you'll be fine, sometimes you won't. If you have the time, do all the steps, but again, uh, if, if you can just stop there, especially with the rear brake, because with the rear brake, you want to have the caliper as low as possible, lower than any part of the system, the hose and everything with the gravity method. With the syringe method, it's not that crucial. So rotating the bike with the gravity method is really important for the rear brake. Now the front brake, the caliper is gonna be at the lowest point anyway, but on the rear brake, you've got to rotate it. But again, with the syringe method, you, you could stop there and you probably could be okay, but we're gonna continue on and do the gravity method. We're gonna rotate the bars to level. 
Since we've pushed old fluid up through the system, we're going to change the fluid. So we're going to put it in the plunger. We're going to take the funnel off. This is why I like having the bars flat or the lever flat if you're using a mountain bike. And we're going to change the fluid and then we're going to put fresh fluid back into the funnel and that will start the gravity method. So if you want to skip the syringe method, you can start here with the gravity method and put fluid into the funnel and we're going to have the fluid kind of just drip down through the system. Bars are still level. I'm going to put the funnel back in. Fresh fluid in the funnel. Make sure you don't cross thread that. It's, it's easy to cross thread if you're not careful. And just a tip, for this one it was easier to put the adapter in first and then the funnel. Again, fresh fluid, plunger in, time to use the gravity method. Going to rotate the bars back to the 25 degree from vertical. Again, I'm going to use this line for the road bike lever. Now I'm going to attach this hose going into a bag or you can just let it drip over something to catch the oil. So I've got my compression fitting on. I'm just going to slide this onto the bleed nipple. Again, if you're using a closed ended wrench, put the wrench on first and then put this on, but I like the open ended wrench. Take out your plunger, rotate it like this. That way oil doesn't splash out. I'm going to pull on my wrench, turn it half a turn, and that's going to allow the mineral oil to drip down through the system. This is the gravity method, so you could just start here and just let oil drip down through the system if you wanted to. Make sure you keep an eye on the funnel. As it's dripping down, you can tap on the brake hose and that will dislodge any bubbles that may be on the brake hose inside. Sometimes just gently squeezing the lever can open it up and let it flow down there better. And make sure you keep an eye on the funnel. If it starts to get low, then you want to fill it back up. But usually you can stop this once the, the fluid gets down to about right there. So let it drip down. It's filling the bag. And then we're going to close the bleed screw at the bottom. So just let it drip down. We're just pushing fluid back down the other way at this point. We're going to close this off. Now we're going to bleed the caliper. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to put pressure on the lever. As we do, we're going to open and close the bleed screw down at the caliper. If you're doing the front brake, you can do this by yourself, or right? you can just hold it down. Now make sure you always hold pressure. Don't release the lever until you retighten the bleed screw. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now, if you're doing the rear brake, it helps to put a rubber band or a toe strap or something like that just to put pressure on the lever while you open and close real quickly the bleed screw at the bottom. So again, I'm going to hold pressure. And while I'm holding pressure, I'm going to take my wrench. I'm just going to open it, keep holding pressure, and close it. We've got the bleed port closed at the bottom. Squeeze that three or four times. And then we're going to repeat that one more time. Again, hold pressure on the lever. Use a toe strap or rubber band on the rear if you need to. Open, close, squeeze the lever three or four times. Make sure that bleed screw is tight and you can take off this hose now. We're gonna reinstall the cover on the bleed nipple at this point because we're done down here. The last step is we're gonna bleed the lever. So all we're gonna do is rotate this about 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees forward. Squeeze the lever a few times. Still got the bleed block down at the caliper. Got to make sure that bleed block is in. And then rotate it so it's 25 degrees backwards. Squeeze the lever. You may see some bubbles come up. If you do, that means you're bleeding the, the lever, getting those bubbles out. And then rotate it so that the funnel is straight up and down. We're going to put in the plunger. Going to reinstall the bleed port screw. Make sure that O-ring is on there. It should be since we checked it when it came off. So I got my two millimeter. If it's a mountain bike. It's probably going to be a three millimeter. Doesn't have to be that tight. Like don't over tighten that. Maybe like 1.2 newton meters. You can look it up for your lever, but it's not very tight. We're going to clean everything off with alcohol. So take off your rag if you put one on there. And then I have a spray bottle with rubbing alcohol. Wipe everything down really well. Mineral oil is not corrosive. It's not toxic, but it is very slippery. If you get it on brake pads, they're ruined. That's why you always take the brake pads off. Down at the caliper, we're going to take out the bleed block. And then we want to make sure we also clean off the caliper really well with rubbing alcohol. So again, I put rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle, spray it on a rag or paper towel. Now it's time to reinstall the brake pads. And before you do, take off your gloves, wash your hands, make sure you don't have any mineral oil on your fingers, on your hands and then go ahead and reinstall your brake pads. 
put the front wheel back in the bike. With the front wheel back in the bike, you want to squeeze the brake lever a few times. The first time you do, it's going to go very close to the handlebar. That's because the pistons need to be reset. They need to go back to their original position. Put the bike on the ground and then reset your lever or your handlebar back to their original position and tighten down your stem bolts if you move the handlebar back to their original torque specs, which is probably around four to five Newton meters. So that is the complete process of bleeding Shimano brakes. Like I said, you could just use the syringe or gravity method and most likely be okay. My recommendation, use the syringe method if you have the bleed kit for the rear brake and then use the gravity method for the front brake. Test it out. If they feel good, you're good to go. If not, then do the whole process. Any questions or comments that you have, drop those below. Thanks for watching.